And good morning. Welcome to Today at the Race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm your host, Stan Salter, along with Keith Fustel. Nice Saturday afternoon of racing to get to. We'll get to all that. But first, let's talk about yesterday. We had the Stronic Five. Before the Stronic Five, you had Bay York on top. Yeah. Was that the first or second race yesterday? I think it was the first yeah, race. First race yesterday. Ba Bay York, a big $41 winner <laughs> in the opener. You had the horse right on top. First time starter, right? <laughs> well, you don't know. Nah, that was, I think it ran twice on okay. the turf, transition right. to the dirt. First time Dirt. Okay. First time dirt, and with this, that's been the, the kind of the stuff we've been dealing with of late. Turf to dirt, horses jumping up. You're taking a little bit of a guess, and you had to in that situation. I was kind of against the fave, so right. looking down, researching Corrales. He's good with that kind of move. Second dam was good on the dirt, so hopefully you followed along. I didn't really kind of do the right early pick five ticket. I played a smaller ticket going back. You, you want to kick myself for kind of sure. missing it. It paid $6,000. So right. it, it ended with Amphitrite at three sixty or Amphitrite for uh, – for, for Russell, so uh, I, I tell you, you missed that, but, uh, you know, glad we had a little little price horse to get you started right. on yesterday's card. It's a nice pick, and Jose Corrales, he had a two-win day yesterday. Let's it? talk about mm -hmm. the Stronic Five. Paid big once again, paid yeah. a little over 11000 There you go. You had an $18 winner in the first leg here at Laurel Park to kick it off, and a $6 winner. Both legs here at Laurel mm -hmm. Park were tough. Then he had a $14 winner in the finale, $5 winner at Golden Gate. That was probably a popular single. And then a, 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 tricky, yeah. and a, a tricky $11 winner to wrap it up down there at GPW Race 8. So there's the payout, $11,240 for the Stronic 5. It pays big once again. Great value for that $1 yeah. wager with that industry-low 12% takeout. Yeah, not huge, huge prices whatsoever. Almost a little free square maybe there at Golden Gate Field with a $5.20 winner, even a short price at Gulfstream Park. You had to get it kicked off. Was it Big Boots that kicked it off for us, That's right? right? Big Boots. Uh, improved 18. effort there. Jerry Robb rolling right along right now and uh, did not have the easiest of trips. Broke a little slow, rushed up, shifted out, rolled right on by. Uh, one clear. Um, we used them into the mix. I think I had them fourth of my selections, but uh, congrats to anybody who was able to put that ticket together for 11000 and change. All right, so we'll try to give you some winners today. We'll try to give you some uh, winning tickets today as well. Let's mm -hmm. talk about next weekend, Thanksgiving weekend here at Laurel Park. We have big stuff going on every day next week. It starts Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. We have the famous promotion that's been going on over 30 years now, the pie giveaway with a program purchase. While supplies last, you get a big apple pie or a pumpkin pie, your choice. You come early, you get free donuts, coffee, cider, or hot chocolate. We'll have a Thanksgiving Day buffet, special early post time, 1125 for Thanksgiving Day. I believe they're taking entries today. A Saturday in the racing office are taking entries for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day. So looking forward to, to that. We'll have a big crowd out here at Thanksgiving. And then Guys Day Out next Friday. Bourbon, beer, and burgers. Some nice giveaways, prize drawings for next year's Preakness and Black Eyed Susan Day tickets. So that's going to be big. How about the stakes next Saturday, a week from today? Nominations are out for the four stake races next Saturday. The Richard Small, the Force to Pass, City of Laurel, the Imagining, Safely Kept, and the 38 Go-Go, Always Mining, Top Maryland Bred 3-Year-Old. He's nominated to one of those stakes mm -hmm. next Saturday. So mm -hmm. looking forward to a big late fall Super for Saturday here at Laurel Park next Saturday. I think Garifana, she, she's in there too, I think, Ooh. as well. Part of the nomination. Some She'll of those be a stakes. big draw. And, uh, yeah, always mining. I guess this will be his first try, maybe get some older horses okay. coming back. We haven't seen him in a while, but, man, look at that lineup of races for you on Saturday the 30th. I guess we'll scrunch them together and maybe have an all-stakes pick four. That'd be we nice. like to do that. That would be good, huh? We'll see. They, they, yeah. they take entries for next Saturday on Wednesday. Those yeah. entries will be out mm -hmm. on Wednesday. And then Sunday, we're not done. Then Sunday is family day. Family day and <coughs> pony races. We're going to have seven pony races. The uh, 2019 Laurel Park Last Hurrah Pony Races, some face painting, kids craft, live racing, so fun for the whole family next Sunday. So looking forward to a big holiday weekend. You can check it all out on the website, laurelpark.com, under the events. It has all the events for next weekend and for the rest of the year. Let's get right to today. Okay. Let's show, show you a picture of the main track. They were doing some work on it mm -hmm. when I was walking down to the studio and uh, it looks like they're still working on it. Yes. We'll have a fast track today. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the weather? We're in the uh, a little chillier today. We're in the 40s. Yeah. 
uh, partly cloudy with a fast track. Your, your, your thoughts on the track conditions? And pretty much. Uh, we saw a little trend last week and in, in inside, slight inside bias. I guess we can use that word uh, for, for the race. We usually don't get that kind of, kind of you know, consistent bias at Laurel or Pimlico. And uh, we're back to normal now, it looks like. Yeah, Short everything was fine yesterday. Well. If anything kind of starts looking obvious in the first couple of races, you and Tim will everybody know. But uh, as of yesterday, everything was, was pretty fair. All right, let's get right to it here. Race one's going to kick off the rolling super high five. That has a low 15% takeout. Small carry over here to get things going. Every race with seven or more horses, we have the super high five. We also kick off the popular early pick five mandatory payout. Industry low, 12% takeout on the early pick five. It paid 6000 yesterday. I like the late pick five today, so I'm waiting until race five for the late pick five. Let's take a look here at race one. We're going a flat mile. Maiden claiming 16,000. Philly Mares three and up. I go with the two gentle thoughts on top. Brittany Russell and Sheldon Russell, they teamed up for another winner. I believe it was yesterday. That was it. Amphitrite, oh, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amphitrite, yeah. A popular favorite yesterday. This daughter, uh, Bodie Meister, uh, now first time blinkers, uh, first time blinkers, period. And uh, she's going turf to dirt. Uh, she had most of August and all of September off. So this will be her second race back after having a, 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 a little break. She didn't run very well early October. She ran a big race going along on the turf early August, so she does yeah. have some ability. Now she drops to the maiden 16, and, and she gets blinkers on, and, and she gets Russell. Russell and Brittany, 31% uh, together. How about Brittany Russell the last 90 days on the dirt, 6 for 12? <laughs> Pretty good. Gentle thoughts, the blinkers go on. Uh, I'm assuming uh, the instructions are just go ahead and go. Kind of like Amphitrite yesterday, they try to dictate it. I mean, the breeding there suggests the horse should be able to handle the dirt. Just maybe she hasn't lived up to expectations. And talk about one that really, I guess, hasn't lived up to expectations is the eight, Steva. Uh, I think they're going to be lining up uh, for, for this filly by Animal Kingdom uh, out of an Empire Maker mare. Uh, the family, great all the way down. Second dam, you've got spelling, great stakes place on the dirt. Um, interesting drop here, to say the least. Also in September, some positive news with this angle. Uh, but, man, unproven yet on the, on the dirt. Obviously, two tries on the turf. Should be able to handle the distance, no problem. Sure. Um, <laughs> will she just be chasing that speed all the way around? Yeah, it doesn't look like she has too much early speed. And a big give up here for these mm -hmm. connections who breed a lot of horses. And this uh, looks like this filly with her pedigree oh. uh, has, has some yeah. breeding potential. Mm -hmm. And then they, 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 it looks like they're selling her today for 16000 So we both go against the heavy favorite here, the 8, Steva. We mm -hmm. use in our exacto the 1. Uh, I, I use the 8 in my exacto. We both use yep. the 8. We, have, we both have the same 4. Yeah. Fairy, w Rish, uh, Fairy Wish ran well second off the little mm -hmm. freshening for Janum Fisher as a homebred for the Fisher family, 3-year-old filly by Super 99. She's 0 for 16. Uh, but that was, uh, that was that first that was first time Gomez last time. Mm -hmm. And Gomez got a, a big effort out of this filly at 38 to 1. Yeah, throw it off a little bit of a break at least she's proven somewhat on the dirt she's obviously not that fast but and she has it the board going around the ground a couple of times so yeah encouraging try work through some traffic late last time third place finisher ran okay on the race up to 25. How about our man Jorge Riaz on a long shot here Pigeon Creek 15 to 1 homebred for Jacks or Better Farm and Kenny Decker she's fit She's mm -hmm. fit to go the mile. She's been going long on the turf. Now she gets back to the dirt today or three dirt try or four dirt tries uh, all sprinting. Not very good, uh, but now we're going to try going long on the dirt. Uh, so and, and you get a good, you get a top five rider with Jorge yeah. Riaz. Kenny Decker, when you least expect it, he'll jump yep. up and, and get you. No scratches here. No scratches. No. Eight horse field to kick off the early pick five. Let's turn the page early. Pick four starts in race two. Mm -hmm. We're going a mile, claiming 5,000. Philly Mares three and up. The old-fashioned wide-open nickel here, and we both have the two Sierra yeah. Leona on top. Your 9-5 to five morning line favorite. She whistled last out for Ricardo D'Angelo, second off the claim against open nickel as the favorite went right to the front and mm -hmm. kept on going, going a mile. That was her third win going a mile, her second win here at Laurel Park, or her sixth win overall. She's made almost... 100,000. So uh, D'Angelo, he's uh, quietly having a solid year, and he looks looks like he has his four-year-old 
daughter, a point given going in the right direction. You get Victor Carrasco yeah. today. Yeah, I mean, she could be the controlling speed. Southern Touch does have some speed, so maybe they'll go ahead and send the fork here on McGee's running here with Julio Correa at a bigger price. Sierra Lona has shown the ability to kind of sit just off of it in the past. She's won the open nickel. A lot of these horses, you know, they've been struggling of late, trying to get through even some conditions. Um, maybe if you're looking for a little bit of a price, Emma's Diamond Diva has had some issues coming out of the gate of late. But she likes Laurel. She she likes the mile distance. She can kind of make a move. Uh, she she could get it done. Gives you the, probably your best value, I think, to close in for this race. If anybody's going to upset the favorite, the five, Robin's Destiny, did all the chasing last time. Broke a little slow, had to rush up into it. Um, gets a little bit of a weight break off of that that, that last race. But is it going to be enough? Uh, Robin's Destiny, she might have just run big off the left. Can she come back to that number as well? Or did she kind of just kind of? Is she going to bounce a little bit off of that? Uh, Sierra Lona right back for me. Emma's Diamond Diva is your, is your price shot in there. All right, we both have the favorite on top there. Race two to kick off the early pick four. Nice starter allowance here in race three. Mm -hmm. We're going a mile and a 16th for three-year-olds and upward. It's an $8,000 starter allowance. Optional claiming 16000 now. Big La, well, scr scratch part of the injury. Mm -hmm. Scratch the even one, thunder. Uh, even thunder, the 1A. A try flying stays in. That's my top pick here in this condition. I go with the 1A try flying for Jamie Ness. Trevor McCarthy rides his eight-year-old son of Tiz now. He's made over 300000 A sharp win last out against open 16000 going long at Penn National. Mm -hmm. Has been in very good form since Ness claimed this horse for 7500 back in August. Two wins, a second and a third. So yeah. nice claim and uh, finds a nice condition today. Look at the money this horse has earned. Eight-year-old the last two years. Stan, 127,018 in 2019. Uh, another up close to 51,000. Probably going to pad that uh, this afternoon. Yeah, has done really kind of nothing wrong in this barn. Can go to the front, can sit just off of it. Uh, Haynes Fever has some speed, so does my eminence. The only thing here at Ness, he's been a little chilly with the favorites of late at Laurel. One for 10 the last 30 days at Laurel with short price horses. We're going to try to beat him with the three my eminence. I have a video of this horse's race, last race at Laurel, September the 14th. Uh, did have a try at Charlestown off the claim and off a little bit of a break for, for Ricky Silva. But I tell you, my eminence, he does not mind a little bit of a fight. And at the two-turn distance, I think he's going to be okay. He's got positional speed. This is a really short field. Maybe he'll have to deal with Haynes fever up top. But look at this horse. Gritty game all the way to the wire behind Goldman when Goldman was really in top form. So my eminence, Haynes fever, they're, they're the horses are going to kind of go out to the front, try flying. I'll try to probably stalk in pounds, and he's going to be an awfully short price. Maybe my eminence for Ricky can get it done second off the claim. All right, we like the same four here. The two, whole lot of luck. Uh, first off, the claim for Lacey. Joan Rosado mm -hmm. will ride. A nice win against Open 7,500 at Keeneland last out. And uh, she finds a nice start allowance condition today. Was dropping into that 75. Yeah. Was the favored. You know, w w wins a big 10-horse field. So this could be a nice claim. Five-year-old son of looking at Lucky here. Yeah. The two whole lot of luck. She's got some back. I mean, he's got some back numbers that do yeah. work. It's a little bit better feeling when he faced it at uh, – at Keeneland, sure. but um, yeah, he's going to have to grind it out. I, I'm not sure if he can quite get up against this group, but shouldn't have to navigate through much traffic. All right, it's a nice starter allowance going two turns there in race three. Let's turn the page here. Race four, lots of action here in the fourth. We mm -hmm. kick off the 20 cent rainbow pick six. A little carryover to get you going for the weekend. There it is, $557. Tim Tullock will have a ticket for the pick six. You can check that out online now, laurelpark.com. Underneath the handicapping section, you can see all of our tickets and picks for today. Also, some nice press releases went out yesterday about all the latest mail and racing news, stakes schedule for next year, and the stakes for next Saturday. You can read all that online at laurelpark.com. Check out the events as well. You also like the middle pick four yeah. that starts race four. Here's your ticket. And the early pick four has been beating us to death, so we'll try the middle pick four. All we right. haven't invested a whole lot, and I try to keep things – Pretty sensible on these tickets. So fourth race, one in the seven. Bobby G going to be your favorite in there. Port Louis can lightning strike twice. In the fifth race, two deep again with Law of the Land and the sixth order for Porky. Great name. Love it. Sixth race, the one and the two. Seventh race, one, four, five, nine. Sixteen dollar ticket. Hopefully can get it done and get you some money for a little bit later in the card. Maybe the late double 
you can uh, hammer that thing. So, uh, yeah, uh, Bobby G going to get you started at 6-5, to 7-5, five, to five, I think is what he's going to wind up with. We want to go to the video of his last stand. Is that okay? Yeah, it's a nice uh, feature of the day here. It's mm-hmm. a $5,000 starter allowance going seven furlongs. Your heavy favored 6-5, to five, Bobby G. Here's his last race at Laurel Park. Yeah, going the mile distance. We're going to shorten up a furlong this afternoon. They didn't go real quick uh, on the front end this day, and this is maybe why he was able to stay comfortably within range uh, under a light hold mid-turn. He's going to shift out to about the four path uh, entering the stretch and circle up. And look at Bobby G. He likes Laurel. This this mile seven-eighths distance, is, it's perfect for him. And Carol Mano's just like, okay, this is easy. A stroll in the park for Bobby G. Rolls right on by. He, he's won this starter condition before in the past by open lengths, beating a couple of these. He's going to be tough right back. Corrales, the barn's catching fire, right, yeah, Stan? big day yesterday. Yeah. Look at this, man. He just easy as a kind of winners there. Now, can he do it again to uh, today? Can he do it again? We have a stat here. You have a stat you mm-hmm. found for trainer Jose Corrales, who had that big two-win day yesterday. Let's mm-hmm. check out your stat you and, have. And this is it for, with the favorites, and this horse is going to be the favorite. He should be a solid one. So it gives you a little confidence. Uh, 27 for 63 with the dirt face, 43%. Okay. Pretty Dollar strong. $1.98, yeah, ROI just about – Right about there. So, yeah, he's down inside. Now we've got a couple scratches in this field. We've got the five out, Regal Quality, the six, Copper copper White. It's going to leave a field of five. Uh, maybe Port Louis has a little bit of a tactical advantage. Maybe, maybe not. Big City Blues, I think, is going to send and hold a little bit better uh, than what he did off the layoff for Lacey Godet. But Port Louis, let's watch his, his last race. He's going to be my top pick. Yeah, I, I'm going to throw him on top to try to try to beat the favorite. And, you know, where did this race come from? I don't know, but visually it was strong. This is Maryland Million Day, right, in the, in the starter handicap. Coming through along the inside, there's Sparty at 3-1 to one that afternoon. For Lacey got a Sparty ran lights out. Came back to run a big race, right, beating a, beating a um, state bread allowance. Look at Port Lewis. Just – just grinding it out, game as they come. Switches over the correct lead, gains a slim lead here inside the 16th pole, and it's just dead determined to the wire. And how about that? The second off the claim for the trainer, okay, uh, given the ample time to rest off of that tough race too is what I like. Um, maybe he can get the jump. He's, I hope he can separate himself from Big City Blues a little sooner. That's my biggest concern if they get caught up in a little bit of a battle. Bobby G is just going to be lurking there and, kind of licking his chops and ready to go right on by. Yeah, so I made the seven Port Lewis my price mm-hmm. play of the day. Trainer Bob Haynes, he's been an owner in this game for 40-some mm-hmm. years, yeah. just got his trainer's license out uh, in his 60s. This is his first horse, Port, uh, first horse, mm-hmm. Port Lewis. He ran a big second uh, first off the claim behind a next out winner. I remember Bob Haynes was telling me it was gonna, after that race he was going to go in the Maryland Million starter. And uh-huh. I said, now, do, do you have a shot in there? And he said, yeah, I have a shot. And look at the real sharp work he put into this horse right before the Maryland Million mm-hmm. starter handicap 46 and one October 12 that was what seven days before yeah. that big win at 67 to one mm-hmm. in that video we just showed you now says since and I remember talking to him after this race he said the horse came out of the race well and I said we're going to run back he said well I'm really a firm believer of waiting about you know four or five weeks Good. to run back mm-hmm. so he's waited over uh, he's waited over four weeks here he's put a couple nice uh, half mile works into the horse Avery Wisman back aboard so you're getting five pays getting yeah. five pounds from the favored he's getting a much better outside post, and mm-hmm. uh, and he might be a little fresher than the favored. And the, yeah. the favored's got to, uh, you know, overcome the dreaded one hole going seven furlongs. What's Caramano's do here? Does he? He's not uh, going to try to go the. Does he try to uh, go the front? No, 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 no. He's nope. not going to go the so front. He, no, sits no. In he tra- doesn't he's have gonna, a whole lot of speed. He'll be mid pack, covered up, getting getting dirt down the back stretch. <laughs> Well, he's only got to deal with a few other horses. That's the only issue. Sure. You're, you're hoping a few more stayed in. Uh, yeah, five and six. Yeah, he, he, he could probably sit in circle if need be. You know, Stan, he, Bobby just doesn't have a ton of uh, of early speed. That's where maybe maybe a slight advantage. Uh, Poor Lewis, he, he ran he ran huge last time. I'm just, uh, yep. you know, I like that he gave him enough time. Speed, lifetime but, best. Man, that was nowhere yeah. close to that prior. Sure. Does, yeah. does he bounce off that, or does he keep thriving in a in a in a one horse stable with a guy who was you know waited forty years to get yeah. his trainer's license? He he was a big time owner. He won the Maryland Millie Classic yes. with Dew. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dew's on his that. license plate on his uh, big big suburban back there. Okay. It says Dew. Cool. Uh, so I remember that. <laughs> that was with uh, Dale Capuano. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so Bob Haynes, he's been around for a while. Congratulations on, on a nice uh, nice claim here with Port Lewis. So we're, we both have Port yeah. Lewis on top. Set Bobby G is going to be a monster. And Caramano had a two-win day yesterday. He, he can, you know, okay, you have a veteran rider who can probably overcome uh, breaking from the one hole here. How about the four? Crush it with mm -hmm. McCarthy for Michael Moore. Uh, the, the, this horse in okay third in that video we just showed you. Then it came right back in a, in a third uh, right, right here at Laurel Park against Maryland Brett Allowance yeah. Company yeah. last out. Oh, this is this is where he likes to run. Laurel Park, look at that record. Nine starts, three wins, a second, three thirds. Uh, another one. He's going to be sitting just close up. I mean, he won't he won't be far back. It's going to be a fun little horse race. You know, yep, Bobby nice. G brings that A game. Oh, watch out. But uh, sure. I tell you, uh, not a whole lot. You know, separating the pace, the flow of this race, they could all converge and have ourselves a really good run the final three sixteenths of a mile. All right, so we both have a seven one four mm -hmm. two here in race four. Let's get a, a quick commercial break. I like the late pick five starts race five, nice maiden special weight, and then race six, our feature of the day. We'll check it out right after this. When it comes to getting back in the game, there's only one team to turn to. The team more high school, collegiate, and professional athletes train and recover with. That team is MedStar Sports Medicine. For more than 30 years, MedStar has served as a leader in the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of orthopedic and sports-related injuries. Ranked among the top programs in the Maryland and Washington regions, we offer rapid access to athletes of all levels. Let the pros who treat the pros treat you. MedStar Sports Medicine. All right, welcome back. No carryover in today's late pick five. It paid well once again yesterday, but as always, that industry low, 12% takeout. I have a ticket, very affordable, $40 play for my late pick five. Let's check it out. Race five, a nice maiden special weight for two-year-olds going a mile to kick it off. I go five deep in this race. I use the two, three, four, six, nine. The, uh, the nine Palace kid could be a nice price in here for Trombetta and Alex Centron. And you have a couple other d decent prices in here. The six order for Porky gets blinkers on for trainer Kelly Rubley, a well-bred Uncle Mo. Cole gets Sheldon Russell. So I go five deep in this first leg. Nice maiden special weight. Race six, an upper level. A third level allowance feature of the day going seven and a half furlongs. A perfect distance for a closing sprinter or a stalker. I single on the two threes over deuces. He's second choice at two to one. The favorite in there, Celtic Chaos, ran a hundred buyer speed figure three starts ago at Belmont for Brad Cox. He's going to be your favorite, but he has to break from the one hole going seven and a half furlongs. So I, I try to beat the favorite there in race six with my single. And then I'm four deep in race seven, and then just uh, have a couple horses there in races eight and nine. You can study my tickets some more on the website, laurelpark.com, underneath the handicap and section. Race five, one of our features of the day, maiden special weight, two-year-olds going a mile. Scratch to one, Phantom Dance. Mm -hmm. That's a big late scratch. That yeah. horse was three to one. So big late scratch here on the one Phantom Dance. Let's start with the three. I'm not going to let Delacour knock me out. He's going <laughs> turf to dirt here with this Colt by Constitution, who's an up-and-coming rising star, young sire by Tappet down there in Kentucky. We, uh, You found a stat here mm -hmm. on trainer Arno Delacour. And this is a small sample. Look at this. Last five years, ten two-year-olds going turf to dirt, right? Five for ten with this kind of move. He is, though, uh, with an ROI of over three dollars just a tick over three dollars and uh yeah delacar so what's that say he usually guesses right i guess on the surface sure. and, and he can and they continue that way but i think the constitutions might be a little bit better uh on the dirt it's a smaller sample so far they're like 27 percent with the two-year-olds uh going long on the dirt but law of the land the conditioning is there uh looking down on the bottom side the mayor was four for 13 long on the dirt i think the transition is just going to be okay here law of the land gets it done a trip for trevor short price uh, yeah. Uh, yeah with the scratch of the one right yep. the three is going to be a heavy favorite mm -hmm. here the two uh for grand motion two-year-old colt by flatter gets weston hamilton mm -hmm. well ran an okay third uh well ran an okay third in, in debut on a fast track and then stretched out to a mile last out was third mm -hmm. as the beaten favored 
Uh, might might move another step forward once again today. Gets Weston Hamilton yeah. for the first time today. Uh, Weston and Graham with mm -hmm. a positive ROI together. Yeah, maybe figuring things out a little bit. Got just too far back in that sloppy shield service. Couldn't make up the ground. Uh, the bottom is there, though. Should just kind of make a progression into the race. I think order for Porky is interesting. Use the source first time out at 7-1. to one. Would like to see maybe a little bit more money, but really didn't show anything. Was under pressure <laughs> into the turn, around the turn. No kick whatsoever. But the blinkers on has been a good angle for this barn and looking at things you know not maybe a lot of true speed in here I, I know UConn Eric the four showed it uh, on the turf and the blinkers go on so maybe this four is going to be the target for everybody but maybe uh, maybe order for Parker can get a kind of a stalking trip uh, this afternoon and you talked about the nine the nine, the nine might be a sneaky price play here out of the Bernie's on fire race uh, for Trump but I use this horse in your uh, pick six or I threw him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. And, and you're looking at it, the breeding. You know, the bottom side for serve is more so sprint. But there has been some routers that have done okay. And there's a stat for Trombetta uh, on the dart the last couple years. Okay, it's three for nine and six for nine in the money. Two-year-olds sprint the route, okay, in their second career start. This kind of move has been good. How about the ROI for that move? $5. So, uh, uh, Palace Kid, not really a toss. You look at that first race, you can kind of glaze over it. But, uh, you know, give some consideration to that one because it's going to hold value in this race. Yeah, it was a big 12-horse field mm -hmm. in, <clears throat> in debut, and uh, Trombetta has come back and given this colt by Palace Malice a, a sharp half-mile work up there at Fair Hill since, and, and now you get the lead and rider, yep. Alex Centron. So I'm five deep in a nice maiden special weight to kick off the late pick five. Let's turn the page. Race six, our big feature of the day to kick off the late pick four. Third level allowance condition, optional claiming 50,000 for three-year-old and upward we're going seven and a half yeah. furlongs you're eight to five morning line favor let's start there the one celtic chaos for trainer brad cox who's having a monster year this mm -hmm. barn's won 211 races you have this horse on top sheldon russell will ride let's show you the big win at saratoga mm -hmm. on august 4th here we go yeah against the state breads a restricted race you know celtic chaos Got a, got a pretty good trip in here. The six and a half furlongs. I think the seven and a half. This is the right kind of distance. They got the call here. Maybe the Brad Cox should got something. Seven and a half. Oh, I've got the perfect horse for this. Sure. He doesn't quite have that, you know, speed at six to stay <laughs> super close. At distance, is this is here with the longer run into the far turn. Oh, watch out. I think he's going to draft into perfect uh, position and a game gritty effort to get it done this afternoon was we'll called to chaos. So Brad Cox, he's run one horse here in the last four years. That was the winner of the Weathervane Meadow Dance. So uh, maybe he'll make it two for two uh, with Sheldon Russell. So I, I think this horse is perfect second off a little bit of a layoff. This horse has run well with this kind of spacing in between the races. Threes over deuces, I think, is going to be the one to try to throw that knockout punch around the turn stand. There's not a lot of true speed. You're, you're thinking maybe an extended sprint here. Maybe the honor of the fleet will go uh, with Trevor for Louis Albertrani, but uh, threes over deuces. Deuces. He's been running against pretty quick horses. It's going to be hard for him not to kind of just blow to the front around the turn. But I, I think Celtic Chaos, the one, is going to be lurking as they hit the top of the stretch. Well, all right, so the one's going to be tough. Has mm -hmm. to overcome the, the rail, I think. Going The, <clears throat> the one hole might not be as tough going seven and a half as it is seven furlongs. Uh, you get Sheldon Russell. Mm -hmm. You get Al you get Alex Centron, who's a couple wins. Uh, well, Russell won one yesterday. I think mm -hmm. they're, 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 Centron's uh, on top, I believe, by a win or two over Sheldon Russell. Okay. They're duking it out for lead and rider. I go with Centron on the two mm -hmm. threes over deuces. Look at the campaign trainer Gary Capuano has put together this year for this four-year-old. Hasn't been off the board <sighs> since this past January. Two wins this year. He's what a ten for twelve in the money. Uh, the the, uh, the with a fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna get a nice stalking trip. He's mm -hmm. gonna be right there trying to, like you said, throw the knockout punch around the far turn. He, he threw a knockout punch back in mid September here at Laurel. Got in front, uh, turned it for home. One by two and a quarter. Fired a big ninety four buyer that day. An effort like that's good enough to, to compete yeah. with Celtic Chaos. Uh, that 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 94 he ran back oh, yeah. on September 14. So mm -hmm. I go with the local local horse. This is his home track. He's he's fired a big sharp half mile work 48 and one November 19th. That was just four days ago. So uh, Gary's not 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 missing anything here. Uh, this, this is going to be a good horse race. Uh, yeah, I think Centron yeah. just tries to get in front, turn up for home, knowing that he has the favor chasing him. But he's just going to try to just just try well, to you know just time it just yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, look at the race. Let's let's look at it real quick from from just you know watching this race develop. 
The one really doesn't have any true gate speed, no. right? No. The three, he used to. I don't know what's going on with him now. Saratoga Bob, we know, doesn't have any gate speed. Tie ball, no. Balivar, absolutely not. Threes right. over deuces might just drag Cintron to the lead, and he'll be able to walk the dog. I mean, could, could he, I, think he's gonna, I think he's going to spur it away. So, tell the chaos. Boy, he's facing some good horses. I'll be, you know, up there in New York. He's all right. I, I, it, I think this is going to be a good one. Those two, I think, might emerge in the final furlong. Now, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of lines in Celtic Chaos' form this year. You know, he, he ran uh, January, February, then needed a little break, and then ran April, May, needed mm -hmm. a little break. August, needed a break. October, now it's been over a month again. Uh, he's, a, he's a lightly raced six-year-old. He's made uh, yeah. 661000 mm -hmm. so I'm not going to fault the campaign yeah. Brad Cox has put together for this horse. Uh, so, yeah, it did, didn't, didn't run well last out, uh, but, but he's come back with, with, with some works up there uh, at, at the Belmont training mm -hmm. track since then. So it's a nice feature of yes, the day. Saratoga is. Bob, mm -hmm. he's going to like this distance. He'll be coming late with, uh, with uh, Jevion Toledo. Yeah. But, 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 yeah, there might not be any uh, uh, speed early on here. Mm -hmm. All right, so nice feature of the day there, race six. Let's turn the page. Race seven kicks off the final pick three of the day. We're going a flat mile, maiden claiming 16,000 for two-year-old fillies. And a big late scratch here, the eight, Princess uh. Anne, who is your eight to five morning line favor. The eight is scratched here in race seven. So I end up on the two, Pete's Pride, with my man Yomar Ortiz aboard for Lynn Ashby, uh, two-year-old daughter of Despite the odds. She ran okay in debut at Delaware in September. Maiden 25 was third that day. And then it's run a couple clunkers here at Laurel for Maiden 40. So a big drop today to the Maiden 16. Hopefully that can wake this filly up. I've got a note on the top of this page. Okay, the eight scratches. All right, after that I wrote good luck. Good luck. Good yeah. luck in this race. If you yeah. can, if you can can give me the exact or something, I really don't have a whole lot to offer for for this race. I mean, I'm just rolling with the percentages here. I default into the five. Jeremiah Dwyer with Maya's miracle. Yeah, buried first time on the dirt. I was up in New York though. Chase two to three wide. Maybe something happened on a ride up there. He's these horses can stretch out for him. Other than that. You know, you got a little breeding. They suggest the nine should be okay. Comes out of a pretty quick race. And the one made a big, big, maybe a premature move on the turf. But the bottom is there. Maiden special weight to maiden claiming. Always kind of, you know, good move. You look for that. Uh, but a trainer, lower percentage. Trotman, he usually rides for Crystal Pick. It goes to uh, the one. But uh, I'm five one nine four in here, and I'm not confident. I know I only use four of these horses in, in my middle pick four. If I can hit the all button. You know, yep. maybe if I hit a little bit early, I will be I'm, adding everybody. I'm I'm four deep in here at the one, two, four, six. All right, so a wide open affair there yes. in race seven. Let's turn the page. Race eight kicks off the late daily double. We're going seven furlongs, claiming ten thousand three and up. Never won three lifetime or straight three year olds. The three we both have on top. Major yep. flirt first off the claim for Donnie Barr in a big race last out. Let's show you that race from November tenth, right here at Laurel Park against five thousand two life going a mile. Gets a stalking trip and then yeah. uh, gets right to the front. Yeah, and this was the key, Stan. The blinkers went on. The first time blinkers, we had talked about this horse a little bit uh, that morning on the show. He was a little bit of a lazy horse. He, he kind of just took him a while to figure things out. But this was the move. They got aggressive. They dropped. They, and all things were positive. Linda Rice was like 35%, 40% with the blinkers on. And look, Caramanos just dragging Caramanos to the lead. It opens up a daylight advantage. Is going to be able to hold firm uh, to the wire. I like the seven for a long distance, maybe even a little bit better uh, for this one. And uh, this is not really – this is kind of a lateral move. I know we're going up in price from 5 to 10. And Donnie Barr, he claimed a horse off Linda Rice last year. I believe it was Regal Quality and, and had a few good races okay. out of that one. And she's been fine. I mean, when she unloads and guys are going and reaching, they, they usually get a couple good races out of the horses. And I think this one's going to follow suit here. Major flirt, the blinker's on. Maybe we'll have to chase a horse like the 5, Lacrosse Sticks, who showed a little bit more speed last time. Awesome tractor. But uh, – I think at the seven, this horse can win right back first off the claim. 
All right, so we both have the three on top. We both have a cold three, two, six on top. And then I, I have the five lacrosse sticks in the mix. Mm -hmm. You have the seven unequivocal with the, the long shot rider, Jorge Riaz, mm -hmm. aboard. First off the claim here for trainer Anthony Aguirre. Yeah, reached in off of a questionable drop last time, right? Yeah, they, they lace, uh, sure. lace claimed the horse for 10 and right back in for the five. I bid on that one. He kind of got lost in the shuffle in a big, big field. Didn't fire. If he brings one of his better races, I think he can close into it. And the, six, the six horse was pretty willing uh, last time out at, you know, against a little bit better field. Finally got going the last eighth of a mile and we can't forget uh, Rudy Sanchez Salomon with the two last chucker a horse we had on top at 22 to 1 last time. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice pick there. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's uh, turn the page here. We have another video to show you. Race 9 for 2 year olds. Mm -hmm. Maiden 2 year olds claiming 25,000 going 6 furlongs here in race 9. The one pitching Ari it's going to be one of the favorites, 7 or 2 morning line. Let's start right there. We have a video to show you of his last race against Maiden 40. Here they are turning for home. Yeah, and this is this was a pretty good bunch of Bernie's on fire runs. Lights out, 103 and 4 with a strong, strong fig. But pick up uh, pitching Ari the 8 that afternoon. This horse is giving effort. And sometimes you got to go back. You look at the running line. It doesn't do the horse's uh, try justice. This sure. horse tried every step of the way. Uh, you get a little leery sometimes. You get worried when a, when a lower percentage barn drops horses. This is the right move. This is kind of where this horse belongs figure-wise. If he can bring anything close to that race back, be able to save some ground. He was wide around the turn. Uh, he's a factor in here right back. I, I'm going to go with a little bit – with a first or maybe a little higher percentage with these two-year-olds. Talking about O'Dwyer again uh, with the five, two L's. Meow, a newer owner here, Hayden Noriega, I'm familiar with. Steady group of works. Um, the mayor, four-time winner. It was very versatile, short, long. It didn't really matter and had some good tactical speed. Well spotted, not the strongest of fields in this two-year-old maiden claimer going six. All right, and the four, we both used the four a little bit. Forrest Boyce rides for Robbie Bales, two-year-old by Orion Tatel. Useful third last mm -hmm. out. That was first time Lasix. Uh, they tried Stakes Company in debut on the turf back in September, and then they, yeah. they regrouped after that, and they got a useful race out of this horse last out at this level. So I, I, I think he makes an another step forward today, the four Taskiness. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And if the five really doesn't speed, uh, bring any speed, this horse can. Did all the dirty work before fading just ever so slightly. I think it's the jump on the two. The two uh, ran well. Pecoraro second time out is a big, big stat. He's like 35, 45%. It's way up there. He did break a little slow, but he rode the best part of the racetrack into the lane before angling and closing up. But uh, encouraging debut to say the least to sustain that kind of a run. All right, so big eight-horse field in the finale. No scratches. We like the same four two-year-olds there in race nine. That's it. We're out of time. Nice nine-race card today. Some features right in the middle of the card to anchor those multi-race wagers. You can check out all of our tickets and picks for today on the website, laurelpark.com, underneath the handicapping section. Keep up with all the latest mail and racing news with all the press releases on the website as well. That's it. We're out of time. Good luck with finding another Bajork today in your picks. I don't know if we're going to unearth anything like that. You saw the morning lines today. I've got a lot of a lot of shorter prices on the line. Um, that seventh race, that's the one. That, that could be the real kicker. With the eight to, to five yeah, favorite out, Prince. Uh, yeah, with, with that horse out, it could really kind of blow things up for you in the latter part of the racing card. All right, well, good luck. Dave Robbins coming up next with today's scratches and changes. Good luck.